Now, the recent Supreme Court judgment, I'll deal with a little later, but suffice it to say that the moment a state is divided into two union territories, which is what was done here, the first question is why was this done? What was the need? Because you had already had precedence rule in the state. You were administering it from the center. So why did you need this? You needed this because you wished to bypass a very, very important article in Article 356, sub Article 5. Now, 356 essentially deals with circumstances in which there is a constitutional breakdown in a state and the center takes over. But then it is hedged with conditions. One of the most important conditions being as to time. In no circumstance can it go beyond one year. This is very important to remember. In no circumstance except two, which is given in 356.5. And neither of them opted. First circumstance is that you should have a national emergency. And the second circumstance is that the election commission should say that elections are not possible in that state. Neither of which opted. So how do you bypass this? You bypass it by this ingenious method of making the state union territories, where you have direct central control and no problem as to time. So essentially what has happened is that this could have continued until the Supreme Court decided the matter. In fact, it took four years for the Supreme Court to decide the matter. It was in 2019 that the state was declared as two union territories. The decision has just come. And elections, hopefully, are going to be held by September next year. So we have had no democratic government in this state for five years, which could have continued indefinitely. This is a very, very, very disturbing feature. And the Supreme Court did not decide this question. Now, it didn't decide the question because it said, we accept the assurance of the Solicitor General of India that statehood will follow very shortly and that elections will be held. Now, I remember I had said in Shreya Singhal, which was one of my early judgments. When a similar assurance was given to me by the very same Solicitor General, that governments may come and governments may go, but Section 66 capital A of the Information Technology Act goes on forever. What has happened here today is nothing less than this. The Solicitor General does not have the authority to bind any successor government. We are going to have a successor government from May next year. Second, and more importantly, he has no authority whatsoever to bind the legislature. And this is going to be a legislative act. So, to say we won't decide means in effect, you have decided. You have allowed this unconstitutional act to go forward for an indefinite period of time and you have skirted Article 356.5. These are all very disturbing things.